What card is that? That was Reality Smasher? All right. Whatever. Both players, 3-0. and White Eldrazi versus Is It Delver. About a minute left for predictions. And it looks like we're underway. Planes pass. Oh, that's what that was. Okay. I was like, what is that? Scalding Tarn. Fetching. Gets a Volk. Looks like Thalia Heretic Cathar is in hand for Morgan. Along with some Reality Smashers and Asidia Traders, maybe a Chalice. Even Mind Sensor, it looks like, is also in hand. Interesting. All right, Gothmog getting back to work. Back to work, Gothmog. Get back to work. <laughs> Good to see you. All right, Mishra's Bobble. Looking at Morgan's top card. We cannot see it. We'll pass and Roland will draw. There's Ancient Tomb. Thalia, Heretic, Athar on the stack, getting force pitching force. And that's passing the turn. Okay, resolving the surveil trigger. Only says, I feel like legacy deck diversity has been on the decline the past few years. I get sad every time a deck fails off from competitiveness. I don't know if deck diversity has really fallen off. I don't, I don't know. At, at what point in time was there like an abundance of deck diversity in the high tiers of, of legacy? And was it more than 10 years ago? Delver comes down for Roland. Cards? Three cards. Chalice on one. Looks like it's resolving. Cloud says you can play anything you want. Delver is just oppressive. Okay. Force pissing expressive on the chalice, actually. I thought it resolved because he was reaching for a die. Okay, some people are sharing prices for some reason. Anarchy says pre-2019 was best. What happened in 2019 that ruined it forever? Only says, I feel like we see a lot less miracles, death and taxes, mud and stone blade. I mean... I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, mud has become something else. I mean, it, you know, if you're going to look at artifact decks in the format, they have um, Kappa Cannoneer and all that stuff going on now. Artifact decks have evolved. Okay, Oko. Oko is the reason that... But Oko is not even legal anymore. But prior to Oko was the best. MTG Banning says, I don't know about diversity, but it's harder to play nonsense these days because you can't lean on Chalice of the Void to bail you out as easily. It can still work like those Yakulhop lists that have gone 5-0, but it's not as easy. Diversity still happens, but decks have to be tighter, I think. Sven says, pre-war was the best format ever in Legacy. Robert says, does mud even ex still exist? Uh, not really. Ryder says, war plus the power creep is crazy since then. Yeah.
Talia says, War of the Spark ruined everything. Yeah, I don't know. Turn Zero Gain's making a great point that nobody thought of until now. I think what we were all ta really talking about here is fire design. And that reminds me of um, over the weekend, I went to a local bar with some friends and struck up conversation with the bartender. And uh, we were talking about what we like to do for fun. And I was talking about Magic the Gathering. And I found myself getting a little emotional. And they said, oh, what's wrong? And that's when I told them about it. That's when I told them about fire design. It's really ruined everything. I don't know. I'm, I'm like a glass half full person when it comes to magic cards, everybody. So I, I just don't understand. Dave Kaplan lived in a pre-war building. That, that <laughs> that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Beagle says, I don't think war or fire design ruined anything. It's just taking the game in a different direction where cards are gr not great for 10 plus years anymore in full eternal formats. But that doesn't mean ruined. You can also play limited formats like pre-modern, et cetera. I agree with that take. Magic is moving in a different direction right now. The priority for the people developing the cards is not to have a fruitful and an abundance of diversity in the legacy format. It's to boost commander, sell commander product, give commander players something new to do so they can build their coin flipping decks and their cat decks and their whatever. Theme decks of all kinds, new tools for them that are optional because it's commander. And ramping up the power level of modern so we can eventually, hopefully, add some legacy staples to that format and have it be the uh, what would you even call it the next iteration of a legacy format that includes all the cards from magic's history so that's all good news um Drazi temple Okay, just going for uh, Thought Not Seer attack here, giving the Umizawa's weapon two counters. NTG Banding says, don't laugh at Dave Kaplan's jokes. You're just giving him an advantage the next time you play him. That's true. That's true. Beagle says, totally agree. I also love where Modern is right now. It's really powerful, but also super fun. Yep. Roland racing again here, though. Umizawa's weapon could gain life, potentially. Have to be careful when to activate this. Let's see. Okay, killing the Delver. Got to leave a count on there for life. Ouch. So, hold on a second. Where are you in the, the combat? Uh, I just went to damage. Okay, give me one sec. Yeah. Um, that would be lethal, no? Oh, hold on, you're at nine? Oh, yeah. I'm nine right now, oh, so okay, that's exactly gotcha. nine, yeah, but... Yeah, nine. Uh, uh, I don't think I have a way out of this. I got a bolt in here. I just don't, don't have it. So yeah. I'll, like, I'll bolt you, bolt but me. then you... Then I still lose. Yeah. Yeah. Good game. Good. All right, the first person to defeat Roland Chang on today's live stream is Morgan. Nambu says, any old school 93-94 fans? All right. Let's be careful here, everybody. I've become a, 
I've become an enemy of the 9394 community for some comments I made six weeks ago. I'm just messing around. Chilia says Legacy is, should be a format where you dig up some old cards like Didgeridoo or Griffin Canyon and combine it with some new card. That, that's kind of what Commander is doing. That's kind of what Commander is doing. Which is the priority format right now. The Pilgrim, thanks for the follow. Welcome. <laughs> Seize Paper Legacy on Twitch instantly follows. That... That's a good way to think about the situation. All jokes aside, we, we do have some old school 9394 uh, format fans here. I was playing some old school brawl at the shop this past week. I don't own a deck, but borrowed from Roland. Format's fun, worth checking out. Power Blast on top. Interesting. What is the Pyro Blast for? Seems like maybe Roland's joking that it was left in by mistake here. Should be good. Out of there. Um, yeah, it seems like he threw it away. <laughs> Fire blast, stay away. I mean, it did his job. I would love it. I would love for you to draw it next turn. <laughs> so I, I'm going to ponder to make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> All right. So the viral blast was actually left in by mistake. So a little bit of a goof there. Um, these players actually were both 3-0 and and split prize. So they're just playing for fun just so we can all watch right now. So uh, maybe not so much diligent care was put into cyborging, more just chit-chatting. It's understandable. What do these players get if they win this tournament? They get a Pro Tour invite and three buys. Eternal glory and the souls of old school players. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thalia, Heretic, Cathar, get, uh, no, actually that was Guardian of Thraben, excuse me. Getting dazed. And Wasteland on Caracas attacking with Delver. Whenever you open a legacy mass stream, there's an 80% chance a brainstorm is currently being resolved. That's, that's true, that's a fact. Do we have the deck list? We do not have the deck list. But we do share a lot of deck lists from various events we cover in our Discord. So you can join the Discord and be a part of the ongoing sharing of deck list situation. Links are down below. Since this is a legacy, since this is a legacy stream, opinions on Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant still fits into some legacy decks. And I'm actually looking for a set right now. I'm trying to get myself a play set of Dark Confidants. I have some ideas for what to do with them. All right. Walking Ballista getting dazed. Pretty good for Roland. This is in New York City at my local game store. Wasteland on Eldrazi Temple. Caracas and a 1-1 one, one walking ballista. Nambu, thanks for the sub. Thank you, thank you. First sub for Nambu, I appreciate it. Today's storm counts at 2. Thank you. This insectile aberration is putting in work here, everybody. It needs to be dealt with. Another Delver. Ouch. Oh no. Yep. Ah, you get it. 
Alright, so there's Prize of Progress and Condor. Um, I'm gonna take the Prize of Progress. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna... I think this Walking Ballista is going to trade with the Delver whether Roland likes it or not. Yep. Attacks with it and then sacrifices it. Or maybe Roland blocked. I didn't see the life counter get adjusted there. Currently playing green post and lands in the format. Very nice. Those have been two hot decks actually on the YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel over on YouTube, 90SMTG. And uh, lands and cloud post are hot at the moment. Get gacked. Thanks for the follow. Got a Hogak fan here. Robert's been watching the Lands playlist. Yeah, head over to our channel and hit play on the Lands playlist. There's a lot of good matches in there. Smasher gets dazed. And that looks like that's game for Roland. All right, we're going to game three. Shar Twin, thank you for the gift sub. One gift sub. I mean, what am I saying? First gift sub for Shar Twin. Thank you, Shar Twin. Thank you, thank you. Hello, Shar Twin. Shar Twin, big part of making this channel happen. Uh, cha uh, chalice on one, getting forced, it looks like. <laughs> Days pitching Murktide. And two damage from the Ancient Tomb. Lotus Petal on the battlefield for Morgan. Dragon's Rage Channeler for Roland. Yeah, the miscut chalice looks really cool. I'm not really knowledgeable about those miscuts and misprints and all that, but is that the kind of thing where someone cut it out of a sheet, like themselves, or is that like it came in a pack, miscut like that? Does anybody know? I honestly have no idea. It's not really something I know about. Ratchet Bomb. That's pretty good. Comics Mike says it came in a pack. Okay. That's pretty cool. I'm not a uh, really knowledgeable with magic oddities and misprints and whatnot. Stealth also s says it came in a pack miscut like that. Okay. <laughs> MTG Banding says, Chris, you love signed foil French miscuts. Yes, that's true. But only miscuts that are like a millimeter miscut. Otherwise, it's too much for me to handle. Uh, 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 Swing it for one. One me. Alright, yeah. cool. yeah. Retrobomb gets a counter and unstep. Yeah, the, the old border um, time shifted cards and whatever. Retro frame cards of all kinds are pretty awesome. All right, Cavern tapping for Eldrazi here. Eldrazi Displacer. Interesting. Okay. And a Wasteland that can't get, can't yet get used for Morgan, but the Ratchet Bomb is on standby. Let's see if this Ratchet Bomb pops off here. Looks like two cards left in hand for Morgan. Mm -hmm. 
bolt on display sur surveil trigger. You got it. Cray says, have you seen a goblin deck in Legacy before? Asking for future reasons. Have I seen a goblin Legacy deck before? Yeah. I play the deck quite a bit. Only says, no, wow, I just looked at last weekend's challenge results, and there was no Delver in either top eight. That's so exciting. I saw that, and it is exciting. It's not not exciting. Looks like I Gonjo and a tapping four for Walking Ballista on two. Yeah, I've played quite a bit of Legacy Goblins over the last year or so. Force of Phil says Goblins only in Penny Dreadful format. I still don't know what the Penny Dreadful format is, and at this point, I, I'm too afraid to ask, and I don't care <laughs> at the same time. I know it's something with cards have to be a penny on MTGO. That's all I know. Bob Squeezy says Goblin Food Chain is gas. Yes. I do not own food chains. Otherwise, I'd try it. Does Roland have Delirium? I don't believe so. Hmm. Just unsure if Morgan should have pinged the Dragon's Rage channeler. I don't know. All right, Ch Twitch chat saying you should have. I just can't make out Roland's graveyard for certain. I'm sure people watching at home could see it much larger than I can right now. I only have so much space in my monitor. All right, Twitch chat saying no delirium. So it's, it seems like paying the Dragon's Rage Channeler would have been correct there. Now he has delirium, I'm pretty sure, with Delver getting dumped into the graveyard. Dragon's Rage Channeler well protected now. Although the Ratchet Bomb can still take care of it. Maybe Walking Ballista saving its two counters for another time. Any idea how elves ranks in the meta right now? I'm I'm not big on tier lists and all that kind of thing in any serious way. But I would say elves is a top deck. Definitely can win tournaments. There's a little drowsy temple. I feel like okay. I touched on this in our on our previous stream and it and it um I think people appreciated that I said it. I don't really know how else to put it. But I think if you set a budget for Magic the Gathering gameplay and the format you want to play the most is legacy. That's the one you want to play the most. If you don't buy commander staples, you don't buy modern staples, you don't buy random booster boxes and collector boosters and whatnot, and just use whatever, let's assume you're buying all this stuff and you're spending hundreds of dollars a month on magic cards. If you just spent it on legacy cards, you'd be able to play legacy. It's just a matter of choice, really. Like some people d prefer to crack collector booster boxes by themselves at home and that that's fun for them great but if you prefer to play legacy and you know your budget is not Elon Musk's budget just prioritize legacy cards and you should be able to play 
make some trades, make a few purchases of reserve list cards, and, and you're you're pretty much ready to go. Obviously, I understand the format is expensive. The prices on reserve list staples are outrageous, but just something to think about. It's just preference, really. I don't think many of the legacy players I know buy collector booster boxes for every set that comes out and crack them. They just buy legacy cards. That's it. So their ongoing budget for Magic is probably lower than most players. And I'm not counting anybody who's foiling out decks or... I'm, I'm putting all that aside. Yeah, people are dropping advice in the chat. And please, please don't take what I'm saying as some kind of financial planning advice or anything like that. Don't spend all of your money and not be able to pay your bills because you bought Magic cards. That's not what I'm saying to do. But if you have a set budget for playing the game and the, your priority is legacy, just, just think about it a different way and maybe you can focus on building a deck rather than cracking boosters that sit in your closet. But Chris, what about those of us who want to play every format? That's a fair point. I mean, to play every format, it's going to start to get really expensive. I'm talking about somebody who just is fine with only playing Legacy, let's say, at, at, at minimum. All right, some people are saying they agree in chat. I just don't want to sound like I'm giving everybody financial advice. I just don't feel comfortable with that. Just offering uh, some thoughts about how to think about starting to pursue building legacy decks. Yep, 13. And, uh, oh, <laughs> Buy now, pay later. Legacy says Hype Train Conductor Dave Kaplan. Big attack coming in. To take eight. eight. Good. Price of progress. Is that what it is? Well, uh, I got it off the uh, expressive. I'm gonna yeah. fold a red. No, no, dude, no, no, no. Awesome game, awesome game. I won't kill myself. <laughs> no, it's awesome. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Jesus. What? That was that was fly, but that's how you the game. You called it though. I was like, are you seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I chased that card so hard. 